So welcome back friends. It is a beautiful Wednesday morning on the homestead and we did it. 30 fruit trees, fruit and nut trees in the ground, irrigated, 100% done, ready to go. Special thanks to my parents uh, who came out uh, and helped us uh, with support, uh, mainly watching the baby D uh, so that uh, Mrs. W and Jack and I could uh, get all this planting all done. So I had a lot of requests about uh, the irrigation. I have found you know, not, not, I haven't really found, but I've been turned on to uh, irrigation, an irrigation system uh, that is really, really good. I think primarily because we live in uh, one of the pre predominant orchard, parts of the orchard, you know, country. Uh, and so those particular supplies are used on the huge commercial orchards. And because of that, uh, they're relatively inexpensive because they just sell so much. So it's a very clever system. It's a it's a little bit more of a pro grade, uh, but it's a whole lot better and a whole lot ma less maintenance. So let me show you the uh, how that kind of works and how we utilized it. A quick tour of the uh, orchard, and then we'll uh, wrap it up. So the whole irrigation system is based off of the, this half inch tubing uh, with these little uh, bubblers. You can see right there, they are measured. These are, are interesting little bubblers because they have a small diaphragm in them and they control the amount of water uh, that comes out. So we can really, I guess, be scientific as to how much we're watering. These particular bubblers here are one gallon. They use one, focus, focus. They use one gallon every hour. And you can buy them in all different configurations. I think these are made by Toro. They're about, uh, when I, I bought them in bulk, they were about 40 cents a piece. And they're, they're really high quality. You can unscrew the caps and clean them out if you have any problems. If you run a filter on the uphill side, you won't typically have any problem. Uh, but we run two per tree, and that way we've got one on the uphill side and one on the downhill side, so we have a nice, uh, a nice I guess, watering area is going to get to most of the roots. The nice thing about the diaphragm ones is, is that we're on a pretty steep slope here. So if you just use regular drippers, and you have uh, your ones on the bottom of the hillside, they're going to, because of all the pressure, the water pressure, they're going to get a lot more water than the ones up on the top side. So these diaphragm drippers control that. They limit the amount of water uh, regardless of the elevation. So the ones on the bottom get the exact same as the ones on the top. This is my orchard tray uh, that I use. It's just a little tool grip I got at Costco where I keep all my fittings in. And it's super handy because you can keep your tools in there and have everything you need. And, and yeah, these are made by Toro. These are the, the little diaphragm drippers just to give you a close-up. If you take them apart, well, it's not going to come apart. Anyway, there's a diaphragm in there uh, and they work really well. So to install them, it's super cool. You just use this little tool. This is a little, uh, like a little punching tool. It's got a stainless steel outlet on it. This is the hose that we use. And so you just take and you poke this right there, pokes a hole in it like this. And then this has a little bit of a barb on it and you poke that in there like this and that's it. And they hold, they hold like crazy. So you can put these in wherever you want to. Um, and irrigate as as you will and it, I've had a lot of problem with those little cheapo flimsy ones You know the little tiny hose that so many of us use seems like every year I have to redo it and these are just a lot more robust They they just work a lot better, but the best part are these fittings So these I used to use these you know the traditional barbs here we go the barb style fittings right these guys right here and and they're they're fine and all, uh, but they take three. Like when you have a T, they take three clamps, and you, I, I was, it's amazing how many of these stainless steel clamps you have to go through, and they're expensive. And then the clamps rust out, and then the, I was constantly all the time. We have our you know we have this hooked up to our well, some of the irrigation. One of these things would blow off or pop off, and the and then the well would run all night, and that's just not what you want. So I was looking for a better solution. So the guys at the irrigation shop uh, turned me on to these. And I think, yeah, they're made by Iritech, I-R-R-I-T-E-C. And these are the best things in the whole world. So how they work is you take your half inch tubing, you can do half inch or three quarter, and they just slip over, they slip over this little deal right there. And the only thing you need to do to secure them is that this turns counterclockwise. And they're cool because they both do the same way. So you put both of them on, turn them counterclockwise, and they tighten up against your tubing. And I've never, in four years of using these, I've never ever had one come loose. They're fabulous. And when you want to change something, if, for example, you know, you run over your irrigation with a mower or something, you can just uh, tighten this, you know, turn this little doohickey deal, um, pop off the piece very simply, 
and put a new one on. Uh, so I, the only fittings that I use, I use these little valves. If you want to isolate different things, there's couplers and there are T's. You don't need 90s with this because it, it usually bends pretty well. Uh, but this is a super, super great system. And as far as cost goes, it's it's really not too bad. Um, I don't I don't know what it's going to be in your area, but yesterday I ordered this uh, pipe. This is 500 feet of the half inch, and it was about I think it was 62 dollars. Um, the little drippers are about 40 cents a piece, and those valve these fittings and valves I think are a uh, buck and a quarter, buck and a half a piece. So you don't need a whole lot of these. I mean for for 50, 75 bucks, you could get a whole bunch of these, pretty much all you're gonna need, and they're reusable for years and years and years. So it's a, it's a, lot, it's a lot less maintenance, it doesn't seem to clog up as bad, and it's more robust, and it just seems a lot better than those little tiny ones. Not only did we get all of the trees in the ground, but our existing trees, we got them all pruned and sorted out as well, and picked all the fruit off of it. So if you remember from the video we did yesterday, uh, what uh, the folks at Rain Tree taught us was that rule of, of thumb where you want to have one fruit per per hand spacing or so. And it, this tree was so loaded. I mean, there were, I literally took off hundreds and hundreds of the little apple shoots and left the biggest and the best ones. Now I have like one, two, three, and, and one up here. And it's gonna be really interesting to see how that changes because in the past, all we haven't really got very good fruit from this because it's just been a bunch of little tiny apples that were really kind of not usable. So it's, it will be nice to see that if by doing this, if we're gonna get nice big, like the apples you see at the store. So we'll, we'll let you know on that this fall. I think the peaches are what I'm looking forward to the most. It's probably my favorite fruit. And this is our first year uh, we've got these, look at that. <laughs> cool little fuzzy peaches they're already starting to look like peaches i can't wait to see uh, how they turn out this fall too so i've i've kind of been kind of babying these ones these are my pet project but uh i'm hoping to get we get our first peaches this year as well so the orchard has become one of our favorite places uh to hang out it has it's just has a neat feel to it it's um here's a i'll just give you a quick or overview of them in the center of it we have a uh, 150 by 150 all fenced in with a um, uh, a nine foot deer and elk fence and then you can see all of the fruit trees and the irrigation one thing that we are, are so glad that we did is that we left uh, the big conifers in here there's a grove of these beautiful dug firs and yeah they do provide a lot of shade and the fruit trees over here on the north side are not going to do as well because of those but i think it's a trade-off the trade-off is worth it because it doesn't just feel like a a sterile commercial orchard. It feels more like, um, it feels a little bit more organic and natural and it provides a lot of shade. And when you want to, yesterday was the first time I ever took a nap in a hammock and it was one of the best things, <laughs> best things ever. Mrs. W got a hammock, got me a hammock for my birthday and we put that up there and we were working and I thought, well, I'll go try it out. And I kicked off my shoes and 10 minutes later I'd fallen asleep in the shade. So it was pretty nice. It's that is some crazy hair you got going on there. I like it. This is when I sleep on it wet <laughs> with no product in it. It's, it's a little big. <laughs> it's a good thing I've got layers. Otherwise, it's... <laughs> oh yeah, show us what we did here. Um, so anyway, so we've got some almonds and some walnuts, little plums, a whole bunch of variety of things. And we've got, we took the dirt out, put everything in, and then we're putting straw on top to keep it mulched. Looks like it might rain, which would be great for the orchard because we're supposed to get really warm in the 90s next week. Have you tried out the hammock yet? No. You got to try it out. I think out. everybody's napped on it. I haven't even sat in it yet. Let's try it. Okay. <laughs> but I might not come out, baby. <laughs> I was saying earlier that I, we were working yesterday and you wondered why I disappeared. I came over and sat in it and then fell asleep. This isn't so bad. It's is pretty it? nice, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad we'd left these trees in here. Mm -hmm. All right. So what's on your agenda for today? Well, this wouldn't be so bad. <laughs> Looks like we might need... I actually have a lot to do today. We've got a whole bunch of walnut trees maybe to plant today, or maybe even tomorrow, but I've got um, uh, lots of paperwork, unfortunately. So I'll be doing that. So the only thing we have left from rain tree, I believe, were, is it the, all, the nut trees, the walnuts and the almonds? No, the almonds are planted. It's just the walnuts. The walnuts. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to go down. We're actually going to do a walnut food forest down by the stream. That's right. And put those in, and we'll have to, we'll bring you along for that too. So that's it. All right. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video. 
we have really enjoyed uh, uh, working with the fruit trees and spending time in the orchard. We're finding that uh, we're just spending more and more time out there. It's just a, a lovely place. It's really fun to watch them grow. And you can pretty, you know, anyone can plant uh, a fruit tree or two if you have a just a tiny bit of yard. And it's it really kind of a fun thing to do. It, uh, it really takes very little effort. And uh, it's uh, fun to watch them grow. And and look after them and take care of them. I, um, that, I, I'm not much of a gardener, but uh, I could definitely get into the orchard side of it. So we've got something really special for you tomorrow. One of our Uber subscribers and uh, uh, that I'm very excited to meet um, is Stu from Tokyo. You guys have probably seen him in the comments. He's commented in the years and sent some wonderful, beautiful things. He uh, lives in Tokyo uh, and is a, a master woodworker, really talented, uh, especially on a lathe. And him uh, and his daughter, and I don't know if his wife is coming, are coming out uh, to visit us um, tomorrow. So we have uh, we have some fun things planned. We're going to go down and uh, plant the nut orchard, and, and hopefully the, they can uh, participate with that. And if we're really lucky, maybe we can get Stu in the wood shop to show us uh, some beautiful um, uh, techniques on the lathe. Uh, we can make something nice. So I'm looking really looking forward to that uh, as well so that's it if you enjoy these videos don't forget to click the thumbs up uh, we always appreciate your comments and i guess that's it uh, we'll see you guys on the next video